สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. So today's recipe is a special one because it's part of a Canada-wide recipe swap. What that is is food bloggers across Canada are getting paired up with each other and we're trading recipes that use the same main ingredient. So recipe I'm showing you today is one that I'm giving away to my swap partner, who is actually from Halifax, Nova Scotia, which is really far from me on the east coast of Canada. And check out the website for this post because you're getting this recipe and her. So double recipe for you today. Now the main ingredient that we're all using is ground beef. And when Thai people think ground beef, we automatically think this dish: g o i t e o n e s a p g o i t e o is noodles, and n e s a p is ground beef. <laughs> so what it is? Rice noodles topped with a rich meat sauce. It's really delicious and hearty and really easy to make too. Let's get started. So we're starting out with the sauce, and we're starting out with some ground beef. It's lean, FYI, and I'm gonna just season it with some fish sauce here. But you can also use soy sauce. Just mash all this together with the fish sauce. And now, it is ground beef, and I technically could just season everything in the pan. But I do find that if I allow the meat to really absorb that seasoning, the seasoning just penetrates so much better, as opposed to it being just sort of around the meat in the sauce. I'm also going to add curry powder. Now I'm using Japanese curry powder because it's the only one I have right now. But you can use any kind of curry powder as long as you like the flavor; it will be fine. And this mashing part is actually important because it helps eliminate those meat tubes. You know, when you buy ground beef from the store, it comes in like little tubes, and if you don't break it up, you cook it; it's still in the little tubes, and it just looks really weird. So this solves that problem. All right. So I'm just gonna let that sit while I get the rest of the sauce started. So I'm gonna start out with just a little oil, and I've got some onions and garlic in here, which I'm gonna sauté just until they're soft and translucent. So my onions translucent. I'm getting a little bit of caramelization, a little browning on the garlic. Perfect timing. I'm gonna add my beef now. Cook the beef and make sure I break up all those lumps. And by the way, you do not have to mix the curry powder super well into the meat. Just you know, get it mostly mixed in. So now that my meat is all cooked, I don't have any big chunks. I'm going in with my tomatoes. Yeah, I was just in Thailand very recently, and the tomatoes in Thailand. Are so terrible. <laughs> they're always picked, especially at the supermarket. They're picked so green, and you get them, and they're never ripe. So it's really nice to come back to nice, fresh, ripe tomatoes. So I'm going to start seasoning this now with oyster sauce and some soy sauce. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a bunch of chicken stock to this. You can use beef stock, but whatever kind of stock you use, just make sure it's unsalted. I'm going to let this simmer and reduce so that the tomatoes break down, the beef become even more tender, and the flavors sort of mingle and marry. Oh, one more seasoning I forgot. A little bit of sugar to balance the salt, and this is completely optional. But I find a little bit of Worcestershire sauce really brightens up the flavor, gives it a little extra personality. So what you want at the end of the day is something that's very much like a bolognese sauce, but with Thai flavors. So the sauce has been simmering for about 15-20 minutes, and it's perfect right now. However, if you notice, the sauce is quite runny, and the meat and the sauce are kind of—they're not one yet. So I'm going to fix that by adding a bit of a tapioca starch slurry. You can also use cornstarch for this. Adding a little water, just enough to dissolve it. Give that a good stir, and make sure when you do this, you stir as you go. Because if you add it and you don't stir, the starch will start to cook in one place, and then you'll end up with a tapioca gel. Just a little bit at a time, and just kind of see where things are at. There we go. You see how things start to get a little bit stickier. That is just perfect. And one final touch of seasoning. I'm adding some ground white pepper. I like a lot of white pepper for this. So the sauce is pretty much done. I've got some greenery going in at the end, but I won't do that till we're ready to eat. Because it just occurred to me that I need to transfer the sauce into another pot because I need this wok for my noodles. 
Traditionally, what we use for this is the wide flat rice noodles or ho fun noodles. I've used this many times in my videos. I even have a video that shows you how you can make your own if you can't find it. However, if you don't have this, you can substitute basically any kind of noodles you want. But the one that I recommend that I think goes well with the sauce is the very thread thin rice noodles that I use for my Mika tea recipe. So check that video out if you don't know what I'm talking about. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get give the noodles a quick toast in the wok, season it with a little dark soy sauce, and then it's done. Okay, so I've got my wok washed and ready to go. If you don't have a well-seasoned wok, you need a non-stick pan. These noodles are notorious for sticking. A little bit of oil. The noodles come pretty heavily oiled, especially this batch. And I have lost my wok spatula. I can't find it, so I'm gonna have to settle with this wooden one. As I always say, working with these noodles, don't crowd the pan. Now, just some black soy sauce. You can use dark soy sauce for some color and a little flavor. And just a quick toss. Mmm. I'm gonna let it sort of sear on one side, get a little toasting going on. So now, I flip the noodles and I get a little bit of toasting. All right, give it another toss. Very nice. And that's it, that's all you need. All right, assembly time. Now before I assemble, I gotta finish my sauce and taste it as well. Mmm, mmm. Oh, it's spot on, spot on. And by the way, FYI, don't double dip your tasting spoon because what happens is the enzyme from your saliva could start working on the starch and break down the starch. And then when you come back to it, it'll be all runny, okay? this applies for all starch thickened everything. If it's hot and bubbly, that's okay because the boiling will kill the enzyme. But if it's already off heat, you don't want to be <laughs> double dipping this sauce. All right, so I'm going to finish it with some greenery. So I've got celery. So this is celery leaves and the inside stalks of the celery, which is nice and light colored here. Normally I would use Chinese celery, but they didn't have any at the store. And I don't want to cook it, that's why I'm adding it right now. I want the leaves to be fresh and I want that crunchiness from the celery still. Always, always want to serve Kui Teo Nga Sap with some green leaf lettuce. The crisp lettuce will help to lighten everything up. See, Thai food is all about balancing flavors and texture and body and richness. Now, the noodles go in. Oh yeah. Oh yes, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Now, this next part is kind of optional, but highly recommended. I started seeing this being done recently. So I think some restaurants started it and then it kind of caught on as a trend that you basically put a raw egg yolk on top. And if you feel woozy about raw egg yolk, don't worry, you can skip it, but it adds such great rich creaminess to this. Make sure your hands are super duper clean. I find this way you avoid eggshells poking the yolk and then breaking it. If you use the, you know, the shell method, sometimes that happens. Yay! All right, and that goes right on top. And hopefully it stays. No, come on, stay. Close enough. <laughs> All right, gotta wash my hands and I'll be right back. A final touch with some green onions just to get a little extra color. You can skip it if you're lazy. And condiment wise, I highly recommend either some sriracha or some chili vinegar. You want something spicy and tart to balance all that richness in the sauce. So chili vinegar I've made before. Um, I'll include the recipe in the written recipe. And it's basically just chili, garlic, and vinegar that's blended together. So a quick drizzle on top really brings that to life. Moment of truth. And you, oh yes. Toss everything together. Oh, the smell. I love the smell of the charred noodles. Mmm. 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 So good. This flavor reminds me so much of my mom because this is one of her absolute favorite dishes. She loves these big noodles. Everything works so well together. The noodles are nice, tender, and chewy. The meat sauce is rich, but it's balanced by that tart chili vinegar and also a little bit of that Worcestershire sauce that we added. 
the vegetables add a little bit of a crunch and the hint of curry powder. You don't want this to taste super strong curry. You just want that hint of spices that make you go, hmm, what is that? It's so good. Wow, I hope you give this a try. It's so easy and so good. It's a great alternative to your usual, you know, spaghetti and meat sauce. And the recipe, as always, will be on hotthaikitchen.com. Definitely check that out this time because remember, I have the bonus recipe from Halifax as well. If you haven't subscribed to the show, please do so right here. And I will see you next time for your next delicious time meal.